I'm Emily Lindemer from Hey Charlie, and I'm trying to help people who are struggling with addiction by helping them rebuild their social environment so that they can stay in recovery for longer. My name is Emily Lindemer, and I am the co-founder of a company called Hey Charlie. Hey Charlie came out of MIT Hacking Medicine's Grand Hack in May of 2016, where we won Best Mental Health Hack. Uh, so what Hey Charlie does is we are a digital platform that helps individuals who are in recovery for addiction. The way that we do this is we run in the background of an individual's phone. We're very non-invasive and we respond to individuals' behavior patterns through what we call automatic behavioral nudges. So we look at things like who someone's talking to, where they're going, and we assess how risky that is for the individual's recovery. And we just provide these little nudges in real time to encourage people to stay in kind of the positive zone with their relationships and where they're going and try really hard to back away from negative zones. And um, we give them strategies for how to do this too. On the back end, we collect this data on their behavior. We aggregate it, we use machine learning algorithms, and we deliver information about changes in behavior patterns to someone on the other side. So someone like a healthcare provider or even a trusted sober best friend for people who don't have a healthcare provider that they work with or feel like they can trust. And what that really does is tries to make a complete circle. Um, I think when we think about healthcare, sometimes we forget about how big the social determinants of healthcare are and um, how much the 24 seven of individuals' lives and just kind of these things about their environment can really affect their health as well. So um, right now, Hey Charlie uh, has gotten full funding from MIT Sandbox, and we also won the grand prize at MIT Ideas Global Challenge, and we are working on submitting some SBIR grants from the National Institute of Health as well. So when I came to the hackathon, I really did not know what to expect. It was the first hackathon that I'd ever done, and I was in the Health Sciences and Technology graduate program here at MIT. I was kind of in that state of my PhD, trying to figure out, um, you know, what other skills do I have, wanting to get out of the lab, um, and so on a whim, I just went, um, but I did come with this problem that I'd been thinking about, and that problem was that somebody close to me has been struggling with addiction for years, and what I see in his process is kind of this cycle of relapse, recover, relapse, recover, and that's really common. A lot of people in addiction struggle with that. Um, but one of the things that I noticed about his cycles were that you could almost predict to a T when his relapses were going to happen just based on who he was talking to, who was giving him rides places, and um, that's something that the healthcare system has a really hard time addressing because it really requires understanding that person's 24-7. And how can we do that? Well, everybody has a phone, so I guess that's kind of where the idea started from. But I think really the success of our team during uh, the weekend of the hackathon came from the diversity of our team. We were six people. Uh, one of them was my friend, but the rest of us were complete strangers. We had a really diverse makeup of individuals. So we had someone with expertise in user experience, someone with expertise in addiction, clinical psychology, um, a couple of engineers, a healthcare person. And so that kind of synergy of all those different uh, ways of thinking really, really helped us come up with a strong solution. Not to mention, we had some really great mentors during the hackathon as well, um, some of whom even had experience in the addiction space. So um, that was a great experience for us, but then, you know, winning Best Mental Health Hack, we first of all didn't expect that, and second of all, once it happened, weren't really sure what to do next. So for us, in thinking about what to do next, you realize that people come to hackathons with lots of different motivations. Some people are there for a fun afternoon or a fun weekend. Some people are there because they want to start a startup or they want to network with other startups. And so for us, we had to kind of figure out between the six of us what were our motivations, what were our strengths through the long term, not just coming up with a weekend solution. So we took a few months to do that, and in those few months, uh, we also really, really tried to seek out what resources were available to us at MIT. So me being a grad student at MIT, we had access to MIT Venture Mentoring Services, which is great for um, aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, we had MIT Sandbox, from which we got funding and experience pitching to VCs. And then MIT Ideas Global Challenge was also great because they really focus on social impact and Hey Charlie is kind of this hybrid of healthcare and social impact. Um, and so 
That was great, and we also stepped outside of the MIT bubble as much as we could. We uh, were accepted into the Pulse at Mass Challenge Digital Healthcare Accelerator. That was um, really great because it introduced us to a lot of people in the healthcare space in uh, Boston and Cambridge. We uh, started a partnership with Boston Medical Center where we're currently piloting our technology, and we also just started in the Thai Boston Scale-Up Accelerator, which we're really excited about. So, you know, that's a lot of things that we've done in the past year and a half and we're still figuring a lot out. And I think my best advice to teams that are trying to figure out what they want to do post hackathon is don't be afraid to take risks and kind of in the back of your head know that maybe you don't actually know what you're doing because really, really the key to success I think is to just be scrappy and get out there and take risks and don't be afraid to think outside the box. You know, I didn't come from an addiction medicine expertise um, area, but none of my teammates did, and I actually think that that's what let us think outside the box and come up with such a creative solution. I think that's really uh, part of MIT Hacking Medicine's mission statement, too, is don't come to a hackathon with some great technology and exactly how you're going to apply it. Start with the problem and see how creative and um, expansion of your mind you can be because thinking outside the box is really what makes the best impact.